and your starting lineup for the Penguin. Colin Farrell as Oz Cobb, Kristen Mialodi as Sophia Falcone, Rennie Feliz as Vic Aguilar, DeAndre O'Connell as Mama Penguin, Carmen Ejogo, Ejogo as Eve, Berto Colon. That can't be right. His name's Berto Colon. Remember Bartolo Colon? Berto yeah. Colon as Castillo, James Matt. Matteo as Milo Grappa, Michael Kelly as Johnny VD, and Greg Walker as Detective Marcus White, playing such a drug addict <laughs> in this episode, man. I get that guy's drops, hair. Man. That guy's hair is built to be a drug addict. <laughs> that guy was electric throughout this episode, man. That was so funny. Um, that's your starting lineup. Seinfeld, you're our guest today. Thank you so much for joining us. What are your overall thoughts on the Penguin episode two? I really liked it. I think that episode one was a great starting off point, a great jumping uh, jump back into this Batman world, but also it feeling very different than the Batman with it being this like Sopranos crime drama um, of it all. And I think episode two, I don't know if I like it as much as the first episode. I do think it is still very strong. Um, The latter two thirds of this episode are up there with me. Um, with episode one at the beginning of this really just like it kind of threw you in and maybe I was just like in a weird headspace and I would come mm. back into it. It's been a while. It's been almost like, I guess, 10 days or something since the first episode. And yes. so it took me a bit to reorient myself. I'd come off of watching SNL. Um, and so it was just like, <laughs> whoa, like, what is going on? Is this supposed to be funny? Um, but I, I really dug it. I really liked it. I think that I think Colin Farrell's just just on one just just throwing heaters at the plate all day long um and i'm really really liking this show so far it's it's pretty fantastic i can't believe that the penguin show is as good as it is yeah 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 i can't argue with you there david thompson penguin episode two yeah it's funny so i was watching this this episode this morning actually i didn't watch it last night and i was sitting there and i'm like hmm this one's not quite as good as the first episode, but that's all right. You know, we're, we're into it now because I would say the first episode was a great pilot because it had a great beginning, middle and end. Like the entire time I was into it, we're getting these new characters, the plots developing. And you really I mean, it was an hour long. You really got a lot. And we talked about it last week. You got a lot in that first episode. Like We were really moving like the, the relationship between. Um, Oz and Vic by the end you bought into it developed really nicely in this episode so for me the beginning of this episode and this is where you're getting really nitpicky with these week to week reviews like we always talk about the beginning of the episode wasn't that good to me but by the end I was loving it I'm like oh yeah here we go like this is the show man like this is the show on TV right now it's dark this one goes very dark very quickly and I loved that aspect about it and it's really like it's funny you kind of hear these things you read these articles this one's going to be the gritty story of Gotham. Is it really? This one actually is. And it's like, this is great. <laughs> like, I'm absolutely loving it. Um, it feels it feels real in the sense of like, I buy that Batman's nowhere to be found, which was one of my concerns. And it will kind of continue to be like on my radar. It's like, you know, why isn't, why isn't Batman pop in? You know, will, will we get a cameo? It's always a big discussion. Right now, it's like, this is just Penguin's story. And like, him being in the middle of these families and that dynamic and how things kind of shift and change by the end of this episode, so well crafted. And I'm so into it. Yeah, I think that, you know, this is a show that hit the ground running as far as tone and vibe last week. And it's it's keeping right up. You know, it's uh, I'm I'm really enjoying the setting that we're in. I in I'm enjoying kind of the the dynamics of what the story is compared to the characters. I think the chemistry is fun. Everybody's got history with everybody kind of thing. It's one of those very lived in feeling shows where, you know, you can tell like this, there's no origin aspect to this at all. You know, uh, we got Vic who is the audience in the show um, for all of us where, you know, that's where the exposition is going to come through and he's been fantastic. And uh, I mean, it, really comes down to like Klein said Colin Farrell is just throwing heat man he is he so is good. 102 top corner just cheddar and his return to comic book movies has been so exciting because uh, I did watch Daredevil ahead of Deadpool and Wolverine uh and I tell you like he is he is very much Willem Dafoe in that movie he's in a completely different movie he is in a movie that nobody else decided that they wanted to be in he got a completely different script there was a different director on set for Colin Farrell 
the commitment he has to these silly as fuck characters has been incredible. And also a little diversity in culture here. He is so Irish in the Daredevil movie. He is so Italian in this movie. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Um, this is so Jersey too. Like, you know, Sopranos fans are loving this. Batman fans are loving this. It's gritty. It's dark. And it's uh, it's it's just a lot of fun mob dynamics but given to us in that hbo vehicle that we love so much so um i i'm can't wait for next week you know we're rolling right along and it's gonna be it'll be interesting to see when the holy shit moment is in this series right because everything's Mm. progressing at such a steady pace that Mm. um i'll I'll be very interested to see when the other shoe drops uh we i think we all know what it is but um when and how that happens will be interesting based on how this episode ended today and that's me playing around with different spoilers so you know we're here we're talking about the penguin we're talking about the batman let's bring in our batman our friend our dear close personal friend the third chair of the direct podcast for spoilers mr michael keaton now you want to get nuts come on let's get nuts all right kleinfeld our Canadian correspondent, who's your MVP for the Penguin episode two? What worked the best for you? My MVP for this episode is, um, and we already talked about Colin Farrell, uh, is Kristen Milioti. I think that she nice. is just, she is so good. To me, she is the mom from How I Met Your Mother, and that's kind of it. That's kind of all I really know her from. And she is playing this unhinged but like you also kind of feel for her like they're doing a great job of making you empathize with this like truly terrible person they talk about that she murdered like seven people to end up in arkham but you see that she's like she's unhinged and she isn't a hundred percent evil like she's not like unhinged in the way that the joker is where it's like i'm unhinged i'm just gonna kill everyone she's like unhinged and like doesn't know what to do about it and is and, and it's really, really like um, sitting with her. The scene of the whole show so far for me is the give me the gun, give me the fucking gun. Yes. Yeah. It's like it's so, so, so good. Um, And she doesn't get to pull the trigger and the whole fall. I think that whole sequence of just call on Farrell. It looks like it looks so like something's going to happen and they do something and then switcheroo and it isn't the way oh, you thought it was. And it's just so good. It is. It is so good. I love these shows. Um, like I love Breaking Bad and stuff like that, where the main character is, co- it constantly looks like they're going to fall down. It constantly looks like they're tripping to the ground um, and everything's going to come tumbling down around them, but they've set up enough. Like they've, they've turned a little thing over here. They've done a little thing over there. They've done this. They've stabbed the guy in the basement and the plan all, it just always happens to work. Like it just always, and you, you never know how. And so I think that like the way that, Sophia Falcone is playing into that is so much fun. Um, you can tell that like maybe she's like starting to buy into his thing a little bit, but like I don't know. I love the the conversation between her and Colin Farrell, the um I'd much rather be dancing conversation, which is like yeah. just yeah, oh my gosh. They're the two of them bouncing off of each other is just it's it's so good. And I hope she comes back outside of this. It's such a weird, dirty water chemistry that they have together. Like, you know, it's it's so tense and like kind of unnerving, but like they, they have fun together on screen. You can see it. And it, yeah, it's what I love about uh, Sophia Falcone here is like, I feel like with a lot of these like crazy characters that we have here, like and obviously she's unhinged, like you said. Sometimes it's like they have it together and then you see spurts of them losing it. I feel like she's always losing it and we get spurts of her holding it together. (laughs) I feel like that's (laughs) such a cool little negative energy that she has there. Uh, MVP, Chris Milotti, two two weeks in a row uh, coming for the Penguin. David Thompson, your MVP. Yeah, I mean, that's to me, that would have been my number one for this week as well. Um, Honestly, like I my kind of like narrowing it down a little bit and kind of going a little abstract is like, and it will continue probably to be a top play at least, but for an MVP is Oz's. Mm, how do you word it? Kind of like managing the situation, like him yeah. kind of like dealing with what's happening. The improv. It's, the yeah. The improv the master. Yeah. It's, it's jazz. so good. It's jazz, man. Like when things go sideways and you're on the phone and Vic's like stuttering through, he didn't do it. And he's just like, well, shit. Like I got to now stab this guy to death. And then he's like, he breaks in. We we get, you know, the show is so well done. Cause like we're, it really is 
no shit, David. It's the Penguin show, but we're really like we're honing in on this character. Like we yeah. get the, specifically speaking of the moment. Everybody on the wall. We're checking for weapons. Pat, pat, pat. And it's like he's got the knife and he puts it in his coat thing. And then it's like, OK, where is it? Like, you know, did he give it to VD or whatever? The guy that's been sleeping with what's his face is uh, I think Luca, who is Carmine's brother. Awesome, yeah, by yeah. the way. The, the head of the, the guy, crime family. Guy from Gilmore Girls, by the way. Um, <laughs> love that guy. Um, <laughs> love him. Anyway, so happy to see him doing this awesome role. <laughs> All that being said, all that manipulation, getting that to somehow work out, leading to the give me the fucking gun moment. Like, and that was just so great. And then you come back down to it, and it's like just him and Vic doing the bodies lay down, like, oh, <laughs> twisted. And but <laughs> twisted, but great. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And like you, you need to learn if you don't, if you don't improvise, this is where you'll end up. And like you kind of buy into it. It's like Penguin is a survivor. Like he is constantly in these situations where like he could just get killed so quickly, you know? Like there's the one in this episode. He's like all backed up. They're they get the knife to his neck and he's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, wait a second. He's so calm. Um, every time he goes and talks to Maroney, I'm like, this guy's about to like get killed in here or like something. Cause he never it feels like he never has the upper hand at all, but he always works it out. And that's been my like one of my favorite parts of this show so far. Yeah, it's uh, and Colin Farrell is just playing it up so well, oh. fast talking, but also kind of like always in confident, but like also stammering a little bit. It's uh, it's one of those things where like I feel like they, it, James Gunn, I feel like they have found like what makes the Penguin character so great, and they've extrapolated it in such an awesome way. He's just always in the right person's ear. He's in multiple people's ear at the same time. He is all for himself. Like the loyalty is not even a thought in his head. It's all about perceived loyalty and that's how he plays it and with all those little moments like that like uh uh Klein you said it really well he's kind of like falling upwards throughout this entire thing and uh my favorite part's in the van uh when they're in the the truck uh did they say FEMA truck yeah they did that's not, that's not very DC right isn't FEMA a real thing yeah they 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 but they 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 mention don't they mention New Jersey in this like they've they've ma- they've made allusions to like actual America they have th- in this, the show in this universe yeah in in this Batman universe there's Gotham we don't know what else there really is it's like different because like they have made more like less mystical DC connections in the past yeah. so even like Gotham, small little thing yeah <laughs> right. <laughs> Like the little thing is like it was like a generic like iPhone penguin was using with like the that stuff too. Like, I don't know. Like that that felt to me very like it's just interesting. It, it's it's a good call because this universe does seem to be doing that more than like what we expect the the James Gunn DC universe to do. Right. And and so they're in that truck, and obviously he's not supposed to be in that car. That was a very big point of the entire plan. Is he's gonna be in the follow car. And how does yep. he get out of it? He just distracts the people with jokes like that's it. He just he just starts yucking people up. And then at the last second, OK, I'm going to shoot you now kind of thing. And and how does he get out of it when the driver finds out that he's a snitch driver shot the wrong guy? And Oz is like, OK, here we are. You know, we're just moving forward. And like there's a point where the driver and old boy, they shoot each other at the same time. And Oz even goes, what the fuck? Like, like he doesn't even know how it's all going to play out. But he's staying on his toes, his very uh, limpy toes. And uh, he's, you know, just playing through it one at a time. And uh, yeah, that leads to my MVP. And it's it's something that I'm really loving about these two episodes so far. The stakes. This is nothing bigger than than what we're getting in front of us. And I love how for Sophia and Oz, obviously the two main characters for Sophia, this is not about, you know, power. This is not about the drops. This is not about money. Someone killed my brother and I'm pissed. That's it. Like, like nothing more, nothing less. And even when the bus goes bad, she asks, like, is this what you guys are, you know, concerned about? Like, really? Like th- these little minute things? No, they they killed my brother. Now they're laughing at us. I'm pissed. And yep. for Oz, it's really it's not even about taking over the drops game or or getting over on certain people throughout the family. Other than killing old boy, he has done nothing like there, there's been no 
like for me things. He's just like whatever's in front of me, that's what I want. Like mm-hmm. it, the the whole the whole plot right now from like the power struggle of it all is that they're kind of dumping the drops game and a new drug is coming in, a new thing is about to take over Gotham, which I assume is going to be our MacGuffin for the second half of the series. I I honestly feel watching this if Oz was told right now, "Hey, actually we're just going to stick with the drops." He'll be like, "Yeah, fine. Cool. As long as I'm on top, don't really care what it is underneath me. And and I love how they're just keeping it small. They're keeping it very low stakes as far as like what is what is at hand, like what is available to grab. Oz is just trying to stay alive. He's it's like when you play poker with your friends. I mean, we all have that jackass who goes all in on the third hand. You know what I mean? I hate the my, Mikey, my buddy Mikey. And um, <laughs> he always goes all in right away and kind of just throws off the vibe of the whole game because in 20 minutes, Mikey's sitting there like, hey, someone come play video games with me. I'm bored. <laughs> it's because you win all in. Oz is just waiting people out. He will fold whenever he needs to fold. He'll play when he needs to play. And he won't play until he has pocket aces. And I just think that the the way they're staking this out, I think, is really fun, especially when you have Oz and Sophia both like going going for one singular thing where the guy Sophia is looking for right in front of him. Um, that's going to be really interesting so to good. see how that plays out. Uh, Klein uh lvp what didn't work well for you we did institute a new rule recently if you don't have an lvp give me another mvp um i do have an lvp and i think it might just be a personal thing but i'm i'm not a huge fan of specifically michael kelly's character yeah i it here's it's <laughs> yeah, everyone else in this family hmm. i buy it i buy that these guys are this mafioso group that's trying to rule gotham and run the drug game i don't know if it's because michael kelly for me i was first exposed to him in house of cards but like every role i see him in i just see that character and i'm it's like oh it's this it's it's just the same guy um and and I just don't buy that he is in the room with these people ever. Um, and so I'm not a huge, not a huge fan of him. I hope I thought he was gonna die. I thought he was gonna get shot, and I was almost yeah. looking forward to it. But no, it seems like they're gonna keep him around for longer to drag out that story, get the whole like yeah. the pictures thing. That's gonna come to a head. Um, and that part's interesting. But what do you, what do you think, Matt? I, I weirdly agree. I can't put my finger on it, but yes, he stands out like a sore thumb. And I think it, it does have something to do with like, that is the Penguins ace up his sleeve as far as the other guy goes. Like, like he knows, like I can turn on Kelly literally at any moment. Like, like that's the, and that's what made the knife scene so interesting is that he didn't put it in Kelly's pocket or a VD's pocket rather. Um, but I, I'm with you, Klein. He he just does not fit this vibe. And hmm. again, I read through the starting lineup. Everybody's so goddamn Italian. He doesn't look very Italian, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, he, and he does, he's not putting on a voice or anything. Everyone else, <laughs> even Chris Similiati has like there's like a tinge of it in there. With yeah, him, absolutely. it's just like he's just some he's just some just some guy. Yeah. Like he married him. Yeah. <laughs> he married into the family. <laughs> um David Thompson, your LVP. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier in opening thoughts, and it's really quick. It's just I thought the first half of the episode wasn't that good. It wasn't very intriguing. And I think to kind of hone in a little bit, I don't necessarily need the whole penguin going to visit Maroney in the jail cell every episode. Like I think we maybe need to like change I hope I hope in the future, I'm sure it will be. Kind of switch up like the the vehicle for that conversation. It's not exactly in like the Batman when he keeps coming out back to the iceberg lounge. That was awesome. This is kind of boring. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my only LVP. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's that that kind of leads into my LVP a little bit long. Like these are these feel long. We talked last week that they might be dragging a little bit. I think a big part of the dragging. There are so many locations in these mm. two episodes, man. Gotta go they are long. in a. Gotta go to prison. <laughs> Gotta go to the club. <laughs> Gotta go to the funeral. Gotta go to the party after the funeral. Gotta go to the event after the oh, party. Gotta go to the apartment and hang with all the, the prostitutes. And oh, yes, right. There's there's a lot part. of places. <laughs> Gotta get Vic laid. Um, all these Vic. different things. And it's just, I, I, this could be me. Obviously, if you're not watching Sunday Night Football, this isn't a problem. If you're not watching SNL, this isn't a problem. I'm watching these in the morning because, and you know, talk shit if you want they are competing with football and that is a thing like like there are people who will not watch this on sunday night because there's a game on you'd rather watch football 
And I, I just feel like these are very long for Monday morning episodes for me personally. Yeah. And two episodes in a row, I'm pausing it halfway through being like, wow, another 30 minutes. Dang. Like we got a lot to go here. Um, so I, I hope the pace picks up a little bit, but, um, yeah, these are dragging just a little bit for me as far as watching, but looking back, I'm enjoying everything I'm seeing. So it's not like any one part is slowing things down. There's just so many different parts that need to ramp up scene by scene. I just feel like it's dragging a bit. Yeah. I think it's interesting because they've continually said this is an eight hour, you know, project or series. So you can kind of, it's going to be eight, one hour episodes. And obviously this one was a little bit shorter than the first one. The first one had a lot more story to tell um, and kind of set up and stuff like that. But I think that it'll probably continually possibly be an LVP or at least a concern because I think it is going to continually be like the runtime. Like only, only we're going to get like a surprise, like 34 minute episode, you know, I think it is going to continually be, and that's kind of like what they're going for. It's hard because part of me is with you, but also part of me is like, it's a means to kind of a greater end where it's like, you kind of need to kind of show all these locations and do all the setup to get to like these great, you know, uh, you know, driving the the story forward. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not as like, you know, we're reviewing Agatha as well right now. Pop that show on you, you blink and it's basically over. It feels like it it feels very like almost like sitcom in that way. This, you know, total opposite. Well, and what it leads to is by the end of it, there are scenes I don't even remember. No, None of us brought up the Sophia Falcone therapy scene with that like Arkham ass red light that they had. That was creepy. <laughs> that was, that was the beginning is... opening scene. Right. Yeah, right. Right, right. And like it, like it, it was a great scene. I forgot it happened until just now. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's top play it's right a, there. A lot going on. Yeah. And it gets us into top plays. Then Kleinfeld, what was your top play out of this episode? Have we mentioned it before? Already? Yeah, it was the my my top play was the lay down. I just like yes, I it's so so just twisted and messed up, but he's he meet he, I don't know means well I guess like as well as he can like he he is trying he sees himself in this kid and is is trying to teach him the same lessons that he was taught and so I I loved that um a really tiny top play is in the funeral you kind of really get a sense for how Sophia is seen, not just you all we've seen so far is her amongst the upper family, her amongst the Falcons when she's in there going to the buffet and the people are looking at her and talking and she starts out holding it together. She starts out as just like, I'm just going to take a bite. And it's like, that's not out of the ordinary. And she hears it and she starts going all in. Like, I love that. I think that that was just such a cool look at how, not necessarily the average people of Gotham see her, but how the people outside of her like inner circle who fear her see her. I'm not going to lie. I did laugh at that scene because like, like the whispers were like there when she was like, Oh my God, can you see it? Oh, oh wow. That's her. And then when she stuffed it in her mouth, it's almost as if the whisper turned into a roar. Like, like people were basically talking out loud, like, Holy shit. Can you believe she just did that? Like, <laughs> like the whispers were very funnily balanced throughout that scene. I thought that was fun. That's uh, funny. David Thompson, top play. Yeah. We've mentioned a, a bunch of them already. The only other one that I wanted to bring up was just the very end where it's like, they're, te- they're teaming up yeah. <laughs> and like, Penguin's got her. He, he's completely like in the first episode. It's like, but does he? But, but does he? Oh, that's great. the beautiful thing about this twisted web, right? Is it's like it, it could fall. It could fall apart at any time. She just doesn't seem you're right. She doesn't seem based on this episode. Kind of what like we were just talking about. Is she like this mastermind or is she really just like she's very reactionary? Whereas like Penguin is reactionary in a different way. Like he's reactionary with this goal at the end of the day. Sophia is almost like going through life, just like reacting to bad things that happens to her and like freaks out. Um, that's why she was in Arkham and everything like that. This would have been a huge top play if we got a cameo in that first scene, by the way. I, for a second, I thought we were getting it. I thought we were going to get one, too. That would have been nuts. Um, but uh, what's interesting about that, like the whole teaming up at the end, one, that point where she's like, seems kind of fun. Like, like that was so fucking good, dude. That was an awesome, awesome read of that line you know, turn into a thespian for a second. But um, I think that was a big, you know, if you want to get into the mind of Oz Cobb, which is something that none of us should do with any sort of frequency, by the way. Um, I think a big part of planting the knife on old boy instead of VD was to get Sophia off her game a little bit. Like she, he needs her to be vulnerable too. 
So to frame this on the one guy that she has had trusted, the one guy she trusted to keep that dude chained up to the radiator, which still there, that guy just hanging out downstairs in the basement. Um, to, to Was he frame not it, getting buried? Who's getting oh, buried at the end? I'm an yeah. asshole. Yeah, he got buried with with the other guy. I don't um, think the you're the guy, asshole yeah, in no, that poor case. Guy. But, like yeah. he just like he gets buried with no pants on. It's just that's embarrassing. Oh, yeah. that's how very Winnie the Pooh style, man. Just give me a Colts t-shirt, no pants. I'll be fine. <laughs> Donald <laughs> <Duckin> it. <laughs> just make sure it's my Andrew Luck shirt. Um, but uh, the fact, like him planting the knife on that guy, I think got s- opened a door to side with Sophia. So now he is literally in, like, in the pocket with every single point of this entire ninja star that is this controversy. And it's just so interesting to see how he's going to get out of this because. It's gonna. It has to come toppling down, right? It's not everybody can. It keep, always does. That guy can't still be in jail, being lied to over and over and over again throughout this entire thing. 100%. It's crazy. Um, one small top play, the car chase, I thought was you know fine. You know, it wasn't very long. Fine. It wasn't like any. There was a scene, and somebody screenshotted it on Twitter, where there are two cars driving up next to each other, and each car has a machine gun pointed out of it shooting at the other car so it's just two cars shooting at each other which is like a pirate ship battle where they shoot cannons at the same time and it's just like this is pure chaos like this is just unadulterated unorganized murder and it's just the city's underwater matt yeah the city is underwater i forgot about that i didn't think about the fact that um another top play the radio thing the 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 like Alex Jones probably isn't the right word, but they had these guys that hate the government of Gotham on the radio. They're like, you know, there's crime everywhere. Everything's up 54% since the city flooded. Yeah, dude. (laughs) Yeah, that's how that goes. End of the world. (laughs) What the hell did you expect? And the bartender's like, don't blame me, blame the Riddler. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sure. By the way, to be so upset about that <laughs> back to the batman we needed more I, I hope we get some more like familiar cops from because like there's that great line in this one where it's like half of the half of the police were working for falcone right where it's like all right let, let's 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 see some more of those guys you know like i want to see like kind of what they're jeffrey up to. Wright in this somewhere that's the big one to me it's like you could totally have brought jeffrey Wright on for one day on set gotten him he's working with hbo right now like he, he was doing last of us stuff like he's in right He's in the oh, he's great in the, point. the corral like he's around. That's yeah. I think like we need to get we need to like make our own odds, Matt, for like cameos. I think Jeffrey Wright's got to have the highest at like plus absolutely 400. I feel like there's like not a lot. There might not be many cameos in this. There might not be any. I don't think there will be. You know, I think there might. I mean, genuinely, I think there might be none. Jeffrey Wright's a good one, though. Like like that slots in well. Like, yeah, if it's going to be. He makes the most sense. Super minimal. He's there. Like I said, he's there for a day. It, it, he's a cop. Where it's like he could just be like on the case, you know, he could just be he like arriving. He knows the penguin, like they had that great uh, Rata a lot of scene. You gotta punch me in the face. It's just <laughs> it's one of my favorite line reads in movie history. I mean, Open just, your eyes. <laughs> he's so upset about it. You gotta punch me in the face. It's uh Jeffrey he's so Wright. good in that movie. I love Batman. I love his Gordon. It's it's I think it's my favorite. I wa- rewatching the Batman before this. It's so good. It's just Gary, because G- dude, Gary Oldman played. Sure, I know. Gordon. I know. He wanted and... to be locked up in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. They're both great. It's crazy. They, they keep pumping it out. Um, these Gordons out because like he was so great. And I think I think I like this Gordon to. Well, now we're getting a whole different conversation. This Gordon and this Batman. That relationship yeah. was that was Perfect. off a comic book page. And I will like. It's one of the only things I feel like I've ever seen where it's like that. Literally is like coming straight off the page onto the screen. It's the best. Oh, shit. These all just got sent out to the press for my email address. <laughs> oh, the mayor's going to have my ass for this. Yeah, yeah, no shit, dude. You're fired. You're fired. You're done. <laughs> like, it's good stuff.